What's going on, people? <clears throat> it's the Air Raid Lord here, and I wanted to make this video since I played the Halo 5 multiplayer beta a few days ago and got a taste of the game. I figured I could give a little perspective into what I think should be in the next Halo game. Uh, considering Halo 4, I had some issues with it. It wasn't a horrible game, but I definitely think it could have been a lot better in various places. Um, the gameplay you're seeing now is just one of the many matches that I've done and I decided to capture, so you actually have some gameplay in the background as an overlay while I do this uh, review for what I think the top five things I think should be in Halo 5, considering, you know, I think that works out. So, um, the first thing I think should that should be in... in and by the way, this is in no particular order, but I think the first thing that should be in Halo 5 is a new enemy type. Now, I'm not saying a new faction completely, like the Prometheans were a completely new faction in Halo 4. But I feel like there should be some something else in terms of enemies that we fight, because in Halo 4 you had the Prometheans, which was a completely new concept. And then we also had the, the Elites, the Covenant. But the thing for me is I didn't really enjoy fighting the elites as much, primarily because they were just pirates, like they were roguing pirate covenants that weren't, like, I believe it was explained that they still believed in the covenant's mission, like the whole mission of the prophets of the great journey, even though all the prophets were dead, and uh, it has nothing to do with the arbiters factions of elites, so, you know, you fought these pirate covenant, you know, f for the entirety of Halo 4, they were working with the Prometheans at one point, and they, I just didn't like it, especially, you know, I, I mean, I like the, it's the same kind of Halo gameplay we've had in Halo 2 and 3 with the Covenant and such, but I just think it should be diversified a little bit, and I think one way, this is my number one, I think one way we can do this is by bringing the Brutes back. Now, I really liked how the Brutes were integrated in Halo 2, 3, and, and Halo Reach, we got different versions of the Brutes. In Halo 2, they were just kind of just big Wookiee Chewbacca monsters, and they were kind of just, they kind of were just like a, a giant sponge. They just absorbed damage unless you shot them in the head. Uh, Halo 3, we had more dynamic Brutes, ones that had armor. You got Chieftains. It was actually more diverse, and uh, there was a lot of different kind of uniqueness with the Brutes in that game. And then in Halo Reach, it was kind of a mix between Halo 2 and 3. Uh, some of the Brutes did have unique armor, but some of them looked kind of like they did in Halo 2, but they acted differently. Like, they didn't take a million bullets, they acted kind of like the Elites, and but and they had their own uniqueness. So, I thought the, the way they did the Brutes in Halo Reach was actually really successful. But... I was kind of disappointed when the Brutes were not in Halo 5, especially since the Gravity Hammer is a weapon that's in Halo 4. It's at, at, uh, This is obviously a spoiler. At the end of Halo 4, when you get teleported to a big room of weapons, the Gravity Hammer is one of the weapons that's in this room. And, you know, even though there are no, bru you know, there are no Brutes in the game, there's still a Gravity Hammer available. So... It was kind of weird. I know the only reason they put the Gravity Hammer in Halo 4 was because of Griffball, which is a uh, 4v4 game where you got to get... It's almost like football with Gravity Hammers and Energy Swords. And it was in Halo 3, and it's been a really popular playlist ever since it was incorporated into Halo 3 with the Forge. But, you know, just to have the Gravity Hammer for those reasons, I honestly, I wish that... Um, in Halo 5, we get to actually see the Brutes make a return. I'm interested to see what happened to them. Like, you know, Tartarus in Halo 2, they kind of took over the Covenant. It was this big revolution. In Halo 3, they stood by the Prophet of Truth until the end. The, you know, obviously the Prophet failed, and now it's kind of, you know, the Brutes kind of fell apart. But it's interesting, you know, what happened? Did they go back to their homeworld? Did they rejoin the Covenant? Because, for me, it's confusing. If there are elites, these rogue, you know, elites that are still loyal to the Covenant... What role do the Brutes play? Are the Brutes trying to compete? Like, like in what way are the Covenant... Like, I'm trying to understand uh, what, how the Covenant is factioned. Because you've got one group of elites that is... Uh, um, they're allied with the humans. Those include the Arbiter, the Shipmaster, and all the elites that are mainly from their home world. And then you have the other group of elites who are rogue, who still support the Covenant, they're separatists, and they don't support the Arbiter, and they left. And they basically joined up with rogue grunts and jackals and, you know, hunters and other factions of the Covenant, and they joined and kind of made like a new Covenant 
within that regard. That was the whole concept behind the Covenant you fought in Halo 4. But for me, if the elites are trying to do that, how like where are the brutes? Did they leave? Like what how, what role do they play? Like I'm trying to understand, you know, the leadership. Yeah, I just I kind of wish these questions were answered. Now keep in mind, I am not a big you know avid reader of the Halo novels, graphic novels, or anything external from the main game storyline that's occurred. I do know some of the uh, you know the Agent Locke stuff that's been offered with the Master Chief Collection, but. And uh, also, I've read some of the terminals that have been offered in the Master Chief Collection. But other than that, I don't know a whole lot about stuff outside of the story. I did go to go on the wiki a little bit to look, but that's just one thing I've noticed. Um, let's see. Uh, the second thing I think that should be in Halo 5, that I think is already going to be in Halo 5, but obviously it's not 100% confirmed... Uh, no more custom classes. This is something I'm asking for the multiplayer side of Halo 5. Uh, no custom classes. I want it back to where everyone's on an even playing field. Everyone starts off with the same weapon loadout. In my opinion, I think everyone should start with an assault rifle. I know people, oh, it's a, you start with an assault rifle and a pistol, but I kind of disagree with that. I say everyone starts with an assault rifle, and then it's up to you to go grab the weapons that are on the map and fight it out in the uh, <clears throat> in the map that is available for the game. That was my favorite part of playing Halo 3, and they kind of took it away with Halo 4 because people could customize their loadouts and have DMRs and battle rifles and all these guns, and there was ordnance drops and all this other crap that kind of made the game like Call of Duty when it wasn't supposed to be. It was Halo, and it was its own unique thing. So I think if they get rid of ordnance drops, they get rid of the custom loadouts, and they bring it back to the roots of Halo 3, I think it will be successful. Now, there's almost an element of, of, of advanced warfare that's now taken place in Halo 5 where everyone has these thruster packs where they can, you know, kind of move from side to side. And I'm assuming this is going to stay in the game, you know, what we've seen so far. And it's a lot like advanced warfare where you can kind of jut around and I'm not sure if they took the idea or maybe they always, because the, the, um, the ability to thrust was in Halo 4. It was like an ability, I think it was in Halo Reach too. So I think this is just now in a, a permanent ability, just like sprinting. It's now an ability that's permanent with the Spartan armor so that you feel like you're this big hulking war machine, which was what 343 said in an interview. They want everyone to feel like they're big important Spartans who are on missions and they kind of take charge in the battlefield and you actually feel like you're, you're you know, in control of this super suit, which I think they've done now that you can climb ledges and different stuff, but that's my second point, you know. Make the gameplay more like Halo 3 in terms of the multiplayer. Um, you know, I know the Iron Sights is also new. I think as long, there's one thing with that. As long with the Iron Sights, if you aim down the sights, I've noticed that you can do more damage. If, like, if you have an assault rifle and you, you aim down the sights, and you zoom in a little bit and you shoot, you can actually do more damage. But I'm not sure if that's because you're more accurate with your shots or if it's because, you know, the bullets aren't spraying as much. I'm not sure what the reason is, but I would like it so that, you know, someone who's, you know, two people are super close to each other, they're bo they both have assault rifles, they're shooting it out, one guy keeps aiming down the sights to get, you know, more precise, you know, accuracy, and then it kills the other guy even though the other guy got the drop on him. I think that's stupid because people are just using an exploit, almost like quick scoping, to get easy kills. So... As long as it's not used for those reasons, I think it's a good feature, and uh, it's something that should be added, you know, these features that kind of bring us back to Halo 3 with some new features added in there, okay? And then, um, the third thing that I'm looking for in the campaign of, or not just the campaign, the entire game of Halo 5, is, um... I want the Arbiter and the Good Elites to come back into the story, alright? And it looks like we're going to get that from all reports and also all the hints that have been dropped in the Master Chief Collection, especially, again, spoiler, but if you've played Halo 2 Anniversary's campaign, the intro cutscene shows Spartan Locke, or Agent Locke, or whatever his name is, who is... I'm assuming you're going to play as him in Halo 5 because he's on the cover of the game and he's been in the... He's been in all the downloadable content. He was in the intro cutscene. And it shows him... He goes to meet the Arbiter. And he's searching for Master Chief. Apparently Master Chief has gone MIA. And Spartan Locke is trying to search for him. And, um... 
basically Arbert is telling him the backstory of how he met the Master Chief, and then that goes into the story of Halo 2, and that whole thing plays out. So it's basically like, kind of like the, I know there's a term, like the prologue, or like it's this kind of almost like, um, in me, uh, what, is, what is the term? In media res, I know it's like in the middle of the action, which is like a term for storytelling. Um, so it seems like from all reports, we might be getting a focus on the Arbiter and the Elites, because I want to see what happened to them. They weren't in Halo 4 at all. You know, Halo 4, the focus was Master Chief awakening, you know, finding the return of the Didact and these Promethean things that are trying to get, you know, the Forerunner Ascendancy to come back and stuff, but in reality, there really were no Forerunners other than the Didact, because he just corrupted the humans and turned them into Prometheans, and then, you know, he himself is trying to bring about his own reign. So it wasn't really a Didact uprising, per se. I think they're dead, mostly. That was the whole story about how the Halo Rings fired, and it killed all sentient life, and... I don't think the Forerunners are around, but apparently, you know, he was, like, in some sleep mode or whatever the fuck it was. So, um, you know, even, you know, I just, there were some elements of the story that were just kind of, you know, kind of frustrating. And that'll, I'll get into my next point, which is the next thing I'm, uh, the fourth thing I want from Halo 5's campaign, which is a, a story that is similar to Halo 2's. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying I want a story where it, you know, where we basically have, you know, a lot of drawn out stuff, and I'm not looking for something that copies Halo 2. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I want a story where we have the story where we got to see two stories. We got to see the Master Chief, we got to see the Arbiter, we got to play as two characters, their stories came together in a logical way, everything kind of warped together. There were 15 campaign missions in the game as opposed to only 10 in Halo 4 and 11 in Halo 3. Halo 2 has the most campaign missions out of any Halo game, which is, you know, fun fact. You know, just looking at the menu in the Master Chief Collection, that proves it, okay? I don't know about ODST and Reach, but in terms of the Master Chief Collection, Halo 2 beats it. And, uh, it, it beats all those games in terms of uh, campaign levels, okay? Now, I know some of those levels are short, so you could argue that, but for me, I liked... Halo 2's campaign is the best. It was diverse. Every single level was diverse. You know, you had diverse terrains, you had diverse atmospheres, you were doing different th things. There were three boss battles in the game, which is something no other Halo game has really had. Like, Halo 1 had the ending Warthog sequence. Halo 3 kind of had a boss battle. You fight, you know, again, spoiler, but you fight Guilty Spark when Sergeant Johnson gives you a Spartan laser with infinite ammo, but I don't really know if that counts as a boss battle. It's just kind of moving from side to side and shooting Guilty Spark with this laser. And I guess it kind of counts, but it was just one random battle at the end. And then Halo 4, there are no boss battles, which is kind of disappointing because I was thinking, like, the, when I first played Halo 4's campaign, I was thinking, oh, there's going to be a big boss battle against the Didact. This guy has, you know, superpowers, and he's super, you know, he's got all these forerunner abilities, and I'm going to go in there and frickin' be Master Chief and kill this guy, and... No, there was no battle against the Didact. Against the Didact. There was just a quick time sequence where you stick a grenade in his chest, and then that's it. Game over. And then Cortana becomes super sane and jumps all over him and binds him to the light bridge so that you can get up and kill him. It's just... I, I just thought there were so many elements of Halo 4's story that were just silly. Like, it was just so stupid. Like, you know, and especially just some of the plot points. Like, that that guy, the captain of the Infinity ship, was just being a douchebag just for no reason. Just, <laughs> like, he was just randomly being a douchebag, pissing off the Master Chief and wanting to get, you know, take Cortana because he was diso... Like, he's just a control freak, and because Master Chief wanted to do something that he didn't exactly believe in, he was flipping out like a fucking pansy. So, you know, I just, I thought there were just some stupid story elements to Halo 4, and I want Halo 5 to get back to the great storytelling of Halo 2, where we had two great stories, it was all about the Halo Rings, it was all about how the Halo Rings operate, because the Covenant wanted to use them so they could become gods for their religion, they believed in them in a religious way, and then the humans were basically trying to fight off the Covenant and also discover what these rings were really meant to do, 
And then in the end, a certain group of the Covenant, the elites and the Arbiter, find out the true meaning of the rings, and then there's a whole civil war within the Covenant. And so just a lot happened. It was a very story-focused game, and I really enjoyed it more than any other Halo campaign. So if Halo 5 can have a story like that, I would I would be all for it, you know, and I'm not sure if we can have some way of, you know, the Master Chief going on this kind of hunt by himself. I don't know how that's going to come into play with I don't know if who we're going to play as. Are we going to play as, you know, obviously we're going to play as Master Chief. That's a given. But are we going to play as Agent Locke, this Spartan that's searching for him? Are we going to possibly play as the Arbiter again? Like even if we don't play as the Arbiter, I would still like to see him in the game. Okay? So that's the fourth plot point. Or the fourth thing for uh, that would make Halo 5 better. And then the last thing that I want from Halo 5, the fifth thing, is I want dedication. And what I mean by that is I want people, when this game comes out, which I'm assuming it's going to come out next year at this time, you know, November, December of 2015, I would like some dedicated servers and I would like people actually on the clock working with this game, not what happened with the Master you know, with the Master Chief collection. We had incredible problems from day one. The matchmaking was almost unplayable. And now two months later, still, two months later, after all these issues, there are still campaign and matchmaking issues in the Master Chief collection. They're not as bad as they were at, at launch. There's been patches to update it. But there are still issues, and it's now January, and this stuff is still not being addressed. I don't want that to happen with Halo 5. If they're going to make a new effort for the multiplayer, and they're going to do something new and interesting with the campaign, this is the first Halo game that is being made for the Xbox One. Let's also keep that in mind. Halo 4 was on the last-gen console, so now Halo 5 is the first Halo game to take part on the next-gen console, so let's also keep that in mind. Um... How, you know, knowing all of this, I would like there to be some dedication. I want the servers to be, you know, operational day one, and I would like the game not to fall apart in every way. I don't want bugs and glitches. Like, you know, I know some games will always have those problems, but the amount of problems in the Master Chief Collection was absolutely ridiculous, okay? And I don't want that happening in Halo 5, okay? So those are the things. You know, those are the things that I want from Halo 5, you know, some new campaign elements, diversify the multiplayer, but don't make it like Call of Duty, because that was what a lot of people hated, and it seems like 343 heard those cries, and it looks like they're going to be uh, refining them a bit. But, um, so yeah, that those are my five points for Halo 5. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and peace.